Well, glad to know you stayed with us. It's still breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. Right now, we're looking at Collapse Greed successfully restored. That's according to this TCN. We know how it's been epileptic, you know, in uh, one year, or not in one year, in from January till now, we've had like uh, six collapse of the uh, national greed. And that means it's more... On the average, is more than one time per month because we are only in the fourth month right now. So uh, we are talking this morning with Dr. Sam Amadi, a former chairman uh, of the uh, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Amadi. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning. Yeah. Um, Every time we hear about the collapse of the national greed, we, we get worried. We are just operating with low, lower than 10,000 megawatts in a country of more than 20, 200 million naira. Let's start by establishing why this greed collapses all the time in the first place. I mean, we've been talking about this, but we cannot get enough of it. Let's just know why this greed keeps collapsing. Well, thank you very much. Uh, grid collapse for uh, several reasons, uh, or, but they relate to technical fragility of the grid. So first, you talk about our generation, uh, capacity 13,000, meaning everything that we have installed, whether they're working or not. But usually, you might have less than um, 4,000, 3,000, some days 2,500 available to consumers. So that is a shows that you may not have redundancies and all that. Again, the network is bad, dilapidated, um, radial, not looped. And so it means that uh, if there is any fragility at one point, it may bring down the entire system. Systemic risk is like a body system. Uh, you have a crisis in one part of the body, it affects other parts of the body. So you, because you have a weak system, because you have, most of your network is dilapidated and old, uh, you're not replacing them well uh, on time enough. It affects also um, uh, the rate and the frequency, that's the language, frequency of all these outages. Again, uh, there is lack of coordination with the distribution and generation sometimes, uh, and transmission. The distribution companies also have bad networks. So sometimes they can't take the load or something trips, it affects. So primarily, you're having this incident of frequent outages, uh, 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 grid collapse, total blackout, because your network is very weak. We have underinvested in upgrade. You don't have uh, very diligent and focused leadership in the sector, uh, and there's also significant, uh, you know, uh, inefficiency in change management in, in in handling all this. And of course. Uh, no, we don't have good new technologies. SCADA system that gives you more reliable coordination of the electricity network is not yet installed. So these are some of the reasons why we have issues. Um, well, I hear some of the infrastructure came before independence and some immediately after independence and all that. Is it because of the cost implication, or is, is it because of the carelessness or negligence that this infrastructure still remain, and now they are contributing to this collapse? Because well, even I, I think uh, both cost of cost is also a factor, and uh, carelessness also a factor. Okay, so how much can well, it be it, that Nigeria well, cannot afford? Because everything hangs on on investment. on par. So I didn't, I, I didn't hear you. Say what? Yes, you said cost is a part of it. But this is Nigeria we're talking about. And our economy hangs on power, a, a lot on power. So it, how much can it be that a country like Nigeria cannot afford it? Well, uh, you know, because we have low generation, low uh, capacity, it means that every unit is more expensive. You are paying more for every unit, you see? In the economies of power, if you have more large quantity, the unit cost will be lower or it has been equal. So because we have low capacity, our unit cost is very high. So you, uh, and the people are not able to pay, and therefore the discos are not able to charge very uh, cost reflective tariff. And therefore, they don't have the revenue, so they claim, and uh, most of the people who bought these assets are not able to access 
funds from the money market or the uh, uh, or, you know from you know from the banks or from other financial institutions to upgrade and then recover over a long period of time. So because of that financial incapacity of the investors and because the the the, the, the capacity to charge high tariffs uh, and the willingness to pay is slow. The result is that there's revenue shortfall and the critical investments that need to be done are not being done. So it's both a cost aspect, which means uh, the, the, the revenues cannot support upgrade of facilities and investment in expanding capacity, both in generation, distribution, and transmission. Uh, and of course, um, we have also very poor leadership at the policy level, maybe at the regulatory level as well, and at the operational level where the discos and the jenkos and the transfer company maybe needs to upgrade their management capability to solve some of this problem but, but primarily low investment arising from the fact that the sector is not attractive is a key driver of this problem yeah but this privatization came not too long ago it has always been a government thing power it's just recently that it was it was privatized and that means that the government the federal government should have done something about this i remember uh, the name that we have not uh, gone past nepa all the time we were shouting nepa nepa was at a time when it was not privatized it was government's thing and i, I keep wondering because we see a lot of people see Nigeria as a, a country that if they have the will, they can do it. So are we blaming it on the leadership? Are we blaming it on the manpower capacity that we don't have? Are we blaming it? What, where did it come from? Because I don't want to blame the Jenkos and the Discos. They are just newborn babies. What about Nigeria well, I itself? I think it's, um, it's breaking, but if I hear you well, if I hear you well, I would say, I think you raise an issue around the privatization and its failure. I, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, privatization just came now, but it has been a problem since the days of NEPA when the government, the federal government was in charge. So is it policy that was not right? How are the countries that are having um, electricity uninterrupted electricity doing it that we cannot do it as a nation can you hear me well uh, let me ask you a question you know There seemed to be a, a little disconnect uh, with uh, Dr. Sam Ahmadi. And um, as soon as we can get him to hear us or we can get his audio as well, uh, we'll rejoin him. But we're talking about uh, uh, the electricity uh, grid. Uh, you know, it collapses and then the people, it is being restored and then the people say, oh, we are doing something really, really lofty. At one point, we had a hundred days uh, that it went without collapse, and uh, they came out. The, the the regulatory, the agency involved or the ministry involved came out and said, "Okay, we've done really well. A hundred days uh, after, we've not seen any collapse." And then, like two days or three days later, uh, it collapsed. That is what it is. They, they spoke too soon. So, what is it that is the problem? All the time we hear about this collapse. We hear that Nigeria even gives light to some other countries. Uh, let me just say we hear. When Sam, uh, Dr. Amadi returns, we'll ask him for sure. Uh, can you hear me now, Dr. Amadi? I think I can hear you better. Though. Okay, be beautiful. Uh, let me just start by establishing this. We've always said that Nigeria provides electricity for other countries. Is this true? Because I've never heard it from an authority. Yeah. It, yes, so, it's true, but it's, look, uh, it's a historical... Uh, agreement for example we provide to niger we provide to i think uh, togo um Abel republic but those are small like uh, 100 megawatts here 200 there. The, the one of niger is to allow us to continue to use the dam you know they they, they could if they open their, the end of their dam from their side it could flood them so it's a strategic diplomatic agreement for nigeria to supply them uh so as to for them to um also allow us to continue to use 
not to flood the, the other end of our dam to enable Kanji and others work. Uh, the one of uh, Benin Republic and others, you know, some historic agreements, Nepal is to give them 100 or 200, uh, not, 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 not a lot of megawatts. Uh, and by the way, it's not the reason why we have problems in the Nigerian energy sector, because some of those power, every day, about 2,000 or so megawatts is stranded, meaning we can't evacuate them. So, so allowing them to, from Lagos to sell is not, not a big problem. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it is the reason we don't have light or we don't have power in Nigeria. I'm just asking how are they doing it, uh, that they will have uninterrupted power. I think Ghana at some point celebrated 50 years of uninterrupted power. And here we are, we we're celebrating 100 days of uh, non-collapse of the national grid. At one point, was it last year or so? So I'm just wondering. Let, let me answer quickly. Let, let me answer you. I don't think, it's when we talk about Ghana has uninterrupted power. Ghana has very small power. And Ghana doesn't have expansive grid like us. See, Nigeria is very large. And every community has, everyone wants to have lights. If you go to Ghana, maybe the capital city is the only place that has, you know, that level of light. So so Ghana is has small generation capacity, not anything compared to Nigeria. But, but they are serving a smaller community. In Nigeria, you're talking about 36 states of the Federation, and you're talking about a landmass that is, and you're talking about a 200 million people. So per capita, we are the worst in the world, meaning Nigeria has the lowest per capita energy. It, that means if you take our energy generation and share it across everybody, we have the lowest in the world. And it's, it makes sense. We should be doing like 200,000 megawatts, or 100,000 megawatts minimum, or 80,000 to have any chance of having good enough light in the way we have urbanized. We have opened up the rural communities. If you go to anywhere in Nigeria, you see poles and lines everywhere with no light. So yes, Ghana has better light in the in Accra area, but they don't have all these ambitious projects in the rural area. So yes, they, 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 they have better light, but it doesn't mean that they have a bigger grid. They have a small grid, but that small grid serves small territory. So now, if you were to advise, who should, who should be responsible for the revamp of the, if you may, of the infrastructure, the power infrastructure in Nigeria? Because right now you're talking about low investment in that sector, and that is when it has been privatized. So do we leave it in the hands of the private sector, or should the federal government look at it critically and see what can be done in the shortest possible time, because we don't believe in this band A, band B, and all that. Everybody should be entitled to um, 24 hours power if it is possible. So I don't know who should run this. Okay, we still have that problem with uh, Dr. Sam Ahmadi, and we're hoping he will come back and answer the questions posed. Uh, on him or to him. Uh, but just to remind you, we're talking about the national greed successfully being restored according to the TC and the Transmission Company of Nigeria. And why should we even be talking about successful restoration of the power grid all the time? In just 2024, we've had six collapse of this grid. Six times it collapsed, this grid. So what is it that is so difficult for a country like Nigeria to do? If there is no investment coming to that area, was it a, a mistake to privatize it? If it was not a mistake, then what can be done? Why are they not doing it? Should there be sanctions? Should there be, there be different policies? What is it that should be done? Because, like I said, I was asking Dr. Amadi uh, even before he, he was off, a lot of Nigerians don't believe, I personally don't believe in the band A, band B, band C and all that. Everybody should have light as much as possible. After all, you are uh, having a prepaid meter. You will use it according to your capacity. But let it not be said, because I've been relegated to uh, group B, group C, group D, like citizens who are less worthy than others, then I will not enjoy power. Let us all enjoy the power and let's see how our capacity will carry us. 
So, Dr. Sam Amadi, we're hoping that we will rejoin with you, but in the meantime, this is where we are. And we also hear that the federal government pays uh, a subsidy of 205 billion naira, that is electricity subsidy, as discos uh, have withheld some other monies, like uh, 50 billion naira in the third quarter of 2023. Okay, so... We need to hear all this from Dr. Sam Amadi if he can rejoin us. But these are things that are disturbing. We need to have power. The so-called Band A have not had, at least in the places, the Band A areas that have been uh, since this announcement was made, have not seen where there is uninterrupted power for 20 hours. In that Band A, you will have so much power for 20 hours, but there are 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 3 minutes, uh, that they will be taking this power. So it's going on and off, or on and off. In one hour, maybe you have like two times the, the, the power going off, for even if it's for three minutes or for, for five minutes. This is good enough to destroy your appliances in the house. This is good enough to um, disrupt the services that you're doing. For instance, if I'm here in the studio, I'm talking, and I'm in band A, and my studio is in band A, and suddenly the light just goes off. What if I don't have the facility to, to keep the light until uh, the power is restored? What if I don't have that? So it's not good enough to just say 20 hours of electricity. If we're going to have 15 hours of electricity and it is uninterrupted, I think I'd prefer that to 20 hours that will be interrupted here and there. What if I have sold out my generator or given out to someone who is in band B or band C because I know that I'm in band A now, I can always have uh, power for 20 hours. And 20 hours, I just have four hours of not having power. So it wouldn't do that. It wouldn't do any much damage to me. So I've given out my generator only to find out that I'll be interrupted within one hour. I'll be interrupted just like the national grid six times in one hour it doesn't make any sense to me so whatever needs to be done needs to be done so that we can all have that power in nigeria if it is less than 10,000 megawatts that we are we are producing what if we produce up to a hundred thousand megawatts can it even be distributed to the people or to to the consumers and all that we hear that there are also other uh, challenges that they are facing you produce the light you produce the power but you cannot distribute it how that works i don't know but you know if we if we raise the bar and say that <clears throat> instead of four thousand megawatts or five thousand megawatts we are getting a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand megawatts uh, then can we distribute that so a lot of questions need to be answered, but the thing is, who should drive this process? If the private sector is not able to do that, who then should drive this? Is it the government that was not able to do this and gave it to the private sector that will run it? We don't know what the problem is, or should we just resort to solar system? Anyway, we've not seen uh, Dr. Amadi return, but uh, this is how far we can go uh, on this segment of the program. We thank Dr. Sam in, an, in absentia. Dr. Sam Amadi is a former chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, and we had him on the show trying to explain to us what is really going on and trying to proffer some solutions. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get him to the end of the segment, but we are thankful for him. Uh, and to him. Uh, we will take a short break now. When we return, our second hot topic will be next. Stay with us. <laughs> 